Hello everyone, welcome to the Perfectly Pieced subscription box from Me Time Delivered. First we have this little ad of this Hoop Studio product. It's a new subscription box, it's already sold out, you can get on a waiting list, maybe it'll open up later in the summer. And then we have the Glide Thread in Cool Mint. This is my favorite thread for the embroidery machine, favorite thread for quilting, love this stuff. I have, let's see, a little pin here with our Drunkard's Path block. Move this little fabric collection to the side. We'll get to that later. A Schmetz needle guide. So, I mean, if you have all your needles together or you only use them a little bit and you can match those color bands on the needles, find out what they're meant to be used for. And it's just a lot of good information overall. So I really love having that handy by my desk. And then we have our guide and they gave us a fancy needle. So this is the one coated in a kind of a nonstick material, so it's not going to get gummy. And here is our single block with quilting guide. So no matter what kind of project you make, you can reference this color sheet. I love that they include that. So they give you some project ideas. The main project is an apron, and I'm going to make that in this video. So that is the wonderful box. And then we have our collection of fabric. I really like how they did this. It's different fabric lines. There's some Maywood Studio. There's some Riley Blake. They're all mixed up. And I just, I love how they picked different fabric manufacturers to work with just so they can have this really pretty collection all together. Usually subscription boxes work all with one line. It does go together and it works well, but sometimes you're just itching for a little bit of contrast and this nails it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this made. Um, I stack all those fabrics up together. They're all cut the same way. And they're really oversized instructions. They give you extra material. The These rectangles are oversized because you're gonna trim them on the machine. So that's really easy to just zip through, get everything cut together, get my embroidery machine booted up. This is the Innovus 1600E machine. It's discontinued, so the 1700E is the next model that you can purchase. This does the 6x8, but this is a 5x7 hoop project, and I love 5x7 by hoop projects. I mean, it's just a perfect size to me. So if you have that machine, this is what you can make. I'm going to go ahead and use the cutaway stabilizer. I'm getting them just all ready, roughly cut ahead of time, so I can just boom, 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 make my drunkard's path block. So I like to hoop up my stabilizer and then add a little bit of pinning to the outside just for some extra securement. And then I find my files, get it all loaded up. And this is 2,400 stitches and it says two minutes, but there, you gotta stop quite a few times, do your ironing and your trimming. So I, I think it came out to about eight minutes per block is what I spent on this one. So this is just our batting outline stitch. This is an important step. You put your batting so it completely covers that. Don't try to risk it. <laughs> just get a piece that is really going to work well. You can see that I'm well oversized. We're going to trim it no matter what. So go ahead and make sure that you have enough and don't be sticking your fingers in there. You see I have a little tool. I am always losing it. So I have a couple things that I have handy. And now I can have my batting down. I give it this trim step. I'm trimming about as close as I can without trimming those stitches. This is an important step. Don't, 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 don't skip this. A lot of people skip it. Don't, don't do that. Just <laughs> take the time to trim it because um, you're going to have a sew line that's next to this. And if you skip it, then you're going to have really bulky seams and it gets really difficult. So you see here, it's giving that next outline. And here, we're just going to find out where everything is going to be placed. It's going to do the whole block outline. And you'll get to see, just it helps you lay out all your pieces. I'm using the thread that came with the subscription box. And this is the doorstep model. You can also get the just digital files. Doorstep is $49 yeah, $49 plus shipping. Digital is $19. And you just go to the website and download your files. So the first fabric is down. This is the inside of the drunkard's circle and it's right side up. I know that feels weird to the quilters out there, but this is the first one that is just up. It's going to stay up. And then the next one is placed right side down. So that's the most important. That's the only thing that's weird. The rest of this, we just cruise on through. 
we place right side down and then we're going to take this out we're going to fold it with our fingies and then get our cute little iron mesh it down and then we get another another line that's going to tell us where to trim from here and so that is a placement line for our next one so I got to this rhythm. I didn't need to do this specific trim step. Um, you got to place your next line. You could always just keep it, like save yourself a little bit of time by doing this placement and setting that down. And then when you're going to press this open with this iron set, like I would trim there. That, that would be a little more efficient, but I'm being a rule follower here for that day. I don't know why. So here's the next placement line. Ugh, I'm trimming that placement line, I guess, to just keep it clear because it does hang over the side a little bit. It can make people nervous. <laughs> and now we have the next piece right side down. And that is all four of those pieces that are in the center. So you can see that we're having that drunkard's path cascading effect. That is so pretty. And we didn't have to do applique or curved seams. It just looks curvy on its own. So we've got this little schmutz on the side. This is a little baby piece. And this is our background fabric. It's all this light blue. And we follow the same steps. Get that folded over. I do recommend ironing every step. I like those blocks to be nice and flat with those seams. And you'll be able to see that I still get a little bit of lift right there, right where the, the foot is. It's still shifted the fabric over. So I do what I can to keep it flat. It doesn't really matter in the end. It'll all get settled in. And this made for a really nice smooth block and you can make whole quilts out of just these blocks if you have batting scraps and do these more complicated blocks that you wouldn't be able to piece on your own. You can totally do this. It made for a really nice soft project and I washed this end project after it was all said and done and it had a beautiful crinkle. So yes, this is a usable quilting item. But they come up with these creative projects because maybe you have enough table runners, enough wall hangings. So it's kind of really creative that they came up with this apron. So that is number three. And then there is just number four for this block layout. And you can see that's all hanging out over the side and that's fine. We're going to trim it all down. And usually I like to do double stabilizer and this project is just fine with one layer. So you can save some money there. And I got my little plastic thing to stick in there so I don't get my fingers in the way. And that is the final ironing. So now all our pieces are down. We're done with the iron. And we do this outline stitch to make sure everything is secure. And then the next step is the quilting. If you want to change your color there, there is a stop that's in place. And we have this beautiful curve quilting. So on my Instagram, I posted some photos of this. And I was asked if I used circle rulers to do the quilting on this. I was like, no, the machine just does it. <laughs> so that is just perfection. <laughs> And we have cut lines that we can cut directly on. I go ahead and keep it square with my ruler. And that's going to be a four and a half inch block. So you might think, you know, if they say four inch block that doesn't fit in a four inch hoop. You need your five and a half or your five by seven hoop to make the four and a half inch block, which is four inches finished. So you can see I used all those fabrics. They're all the different centers. And then I'm making a half circle by sewing two drunkards paths together on my sewing machine. So there's your batting and then your stitch line. And it makes the seams pretty flat. And with this, I had a little bit of shifting. You notice that I didn't pin any of these blocks. 
And it still turned out all right. Uh, wasn't anything that I was upset over and no one noticed <laughs> that some, like the tops of the circles did not line up super duper perfectly. And so I referenced the guide. I got them in the same order because they did a good job on color placement. The dark light, dark light. And so that is the bottom of my apron. Very pretty, ready to go. So now we have these other pieces to connect to the top of our drunkard circle on this border. And some people put batting in this step and then did more quilting. That was super cute. Some people um, kept the this part open and attached more backing. You do have extra fabric and you can entirely do that to make each of these drunkards path blocks a pocket on the apron. That was super cute. I didn't want to, I just wanted to have a cute little apron so I didn't do the extra step. And you can see here, <laughs> I did not line it up perfectly. I used pins or clips and I still had some shifting. Just I just trimmed it away. It doesn't have to be completely square in my book. <laughs> And so that's the top of the apron attached to that. And then this is the back of the apron. You can see I'm just like finger pressing the seams because I just need to go down the side. It would have been better if I would have ironed those pieces, <laughs> but I don't know. I didn't feel like standing up for a minute that day, I guess. <laughs> so I did the side, I'm doing the bottom seam and just guiding those seams open with my finger. I really didn't press them flat. I just, I don't know, I was like barreling through this and it all turned out fine. Here's that final seam, making things match up as well as I can. And since the blocks are thicker, you've got batting, you've got stitching, you've got seams. I decided to turn this inside out and you're supposed to just uh, press it flat and the bottom of the block is supposed to be the bottom of the seam. But I felt like that there's just this little lip and I wanted to go ahead and keep that. So I flattened it out as much as I could. I kept that, what would be the seam allowance and I just stitched that down. I thought that was cute. And it kind of looks like there's a little bit of binding at the bottom of the apron, but then I had excess fabric at the top of the apron because I did that. So I did have to do another bit of trimming to square it up and keep it lined up. I added some decorative stitching to the top to flatten that down and now I'm doing my straps. I know that I didn't follow the instructions perfectly. I don't remember what, it, what I was supposed to do differently but this is how I know how to do straps and it's tried and true. So we have this navy fabric that was the strap and I did a kind of like working with binding. I did that angle seam and then now I'm just going to fold in and half fold in again on those halves and that's going to make it a fourth of the size that I was originally cutting it at. I think this was a four inch strap and then it yields a one inch strap in the end. So I just put that fold at the top of my project. I think this step was probably different because <laughs> I struggled and I just I just clipped it in place. The straps are so long that you're not going to notice if it's too super uneven and it was it was long enough for my belly i mean i'm not a tiny lady <laughs> so i had plenty of room to tie it and i just kept them nice and long but you could always trim them to whatever size that you want so i've got clips i've got my little pins and let's see did i work from the center out yeah i just wanted to anchor that right on the apron so I started from a corner instead of just end to end. I think they had a suggestion about moving like centered out, but I didn't want loose threads from starts and stops in the middle. And then we just move it on out. So I just zip through, I finished that seam. I've got black thread on the top. I didn't have a navy thread to coordinate with it and it blended right in. It's not a big deal. And then I went from my edge, anchored those edges, and then down through the rest of the strap. Let's see, so at this point I already added a little bit of decorative stitching. 
on my apron. Finish my strap. And I'm so proud of it. This is how it turned out. It's super duper cute. And look at that little flare at the corner. I just <laughs> immediately love it. And I did use it that day. It got muddy. I washed it and it washed up beautifully. So I think it's just a cute little accent. I have nothing like this. It's just so pretty and perfectly pieced. So if you want to get that subscription, I'll leave a link down below to where you can get that from me time delivered. And you have a great day. Bye.